Hello! Ako si Jonna. Maayong pag-abot diri sa Bisaya Classroom. If you are new to my channel, my name is Jonna and I teach Bisaya. The Philippines has a lot of languages in it, but Bisaya is the second most widely spoken language in the Philippines next to Tagalog or Filipino, which is the national language. Okay, and the Bisaya that I will be teaching is the Bisaya most widely spoken in the Davao region and in most places in Mindanao. It can also be understood in Cebu, Bohol, and in some places in Visayas. So if you are planning to visit these beautiful places in the Philippines, Learning Bisaya is a must. If you are new to my channel and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so that you will be notified on my next lessons. At the end of this video or at the end of this lesson, you will be able to learn the following. Number one, you will learn action words in Bisaya. Number two, you will learn nouns in Bisaya. Number three, you will learn adverbs of time in Visaya. Number four, you will learn special words or connectors in Visaya. Number five, you, you can uh, transform uh, Visaya action words into different tenses, past, present, and future. Then you are going to learn how to construct Visaya sentences. And lastly, you are going to translate English sentences to Bisaya. It sounds a lot, but I believe that at the end of this video, if you will just finish it, then you will really discover that, ah, I have learned a lot. Are you ready? So, dear learners, our lesson today has five steps, okay? So, I am hoping that you are going to finish all the steps for the learning to be complete. Okay, so step one, it will be word bank. So we will be having words here and there, okay? And then step two, we will uh, transform uh, action words to different tenses. That's step two. And then step three, we are going to learn the Bisaya sentence structure, the basic Bisaya sentence structure. Step four, we are going to construct sentences in Bisaya. And lastly, step five would be the, you know, it will be the summary of all. Uh, you will be translating an English sentence to Bisaya. Okay, so I am really hoping that all of you will reach until step five. If you reach until step five, you should comment down below and you should tell me what have you learned. And I will give you a big shout out next video. All right, so let's have our word back now. This is step one, okay? Prepare your pencil and paper or pen and paper. Okay, so let's start first with the action words. So we will learn four action words today. Number one, that's inom, means drink in English. Number two, that's kaon, means eat in English. Number three, that's, um, what's number three? That's gamit. Okay, gamit meaning use in English. And number four, that's adto meaning go, okay, adto, go, all right, so these are the four action words. Next would be the prefixes that we will be using later on to transform these action words into different tenses, okay, so let's have the present, for the present we can use the prefix um, naga or ga, short one, okay, naga or ga, they mean the same. And then for the past, we can have nag or ni. Okay, so nag or ni. Prefix for the past. And for the future, we can have mag or mu. Actually, I already discussed mu. Okay, in Davao, we always use mu. But we always sometimes use nag. So they mean the same, okay? So again, we have these prefixes and we're going to discuss that one later on. Okay, next would be our pronouns in Bisaya. So there are a lot of pronouns in Bisaya, but we will first learn these two important pronouns. One is ko, it means I, and then let's have ka, 
meaning you. Okay, so let me remind you that the direct, direct translation of I in Visaya is ako. But since we will be using I in the middle of the sentence in this lesson, so we will have ko. The same with you. The, the direct translation of you is ikaw. But um, since we will be using that word in the middle of the sentence, in this lesson, we will have ka. Okay? Ko and ka. Very easy to understand. Next, uh, we will be having uh, nouns. Okay? So, we'll have nouns. We're, I don't know where am I going to put the nouns, but the nouns are the following. So, number one, let's have too big. That's water. Too big. Water, then gatas, milk, and we have tambal, meaning medicine, and we also have kanon, rice, cooked rice, kanon, that's cooked rice, and we have pan, meaning bread, okay, pan, meaning bread, and we have, um, what do you call this one, I forgot, uh, we have sabon, meaning soap, okay? And we have simbahan, church, okay? So, those are the nouns, okay? Few of the nouns that you will be learning today. Are you still good? Okay, next, our word bank is not yet complete. So, we will have adverbs of time, okay? So, these words signify specific time or time in Visaya. So, Number one, that, that's gahapon, meaning yesterday. Gahapon, yesterday. And then karon, meaning today. Okay, or now. And we have ugma, meaning tomorrow. Okay, and we also have unya, meaning later. And we have ganina, meaning a while ago. Okay, ganina, a while ago. So these are the adverbs of time. And then, to complete our word bank, these are the short words, very important words that you will know, okay? So, number one, that's C, okay, C. And then next is Sa, next is Ug, okay? So, I will be explaining to you later on where are we going to use C, Sa, and Ug. Yay! Our word bank is complete don't worry don't don't uh, be discouraged oh there are a lot of words no don't worry finish until the end of the video and you'll be fine okay so that's the end of step one now we'll go to step two all right so welcome to step two i hope that you're still fine i believe you are fine okay step two we are just going to you know try practice Transforming these uh, action words into different tenses. So let's practice before we will use them later on in sentences. Okay, so let's have inom. That's our root word inom. That's drink in English. So to make it uh, in the present or the action is continuous, it's happening. So we could say naga inom or ga inom. Okay, so they mean the same. In the past, we could say nag-inom or ni-inom. Nag-inom or ni-inom. Okay? Next number, uh, next number. Next is the future. So, we could say mag-inom or mo-inom. Okay? Mag-inom or mo-inom. Okay? Next, let's have um, kaon. That's eat. Okay? So, can you tell me how to make kaon in, in the present tense? Aha, okay, good. So, naga kaon or ga kaon. Okay. And then in the past, nag kaon, nag kaon or ni kaon. Okay, ni kaon. Okay. And in the future, mag kaon or mu kaon. Okay, good. Next is gamit, that's use, okay? So, translated in um, present. Nagagamit, okay? Gagamit, good. Okay, how about in the past? Nagamit or nigamit, okay? Okay.
Okay, and then future, magamit or mugamit. Okay, good, good, good. You're on the right track. And lastly, let's have adto. It means go. Nagaadto or gaadto. Okay, in the past. Nagadto or ni adto. Okay, good. And then future. Magadto or mo adto. Okay, good job. It's hard to clap. Okay, congratulations. You're so good. Okay, you know, if you're asking me, teacher, why are there uh, different prefixes? You know, that's the beauty of the Bisaya language. You have a lot of choices. Okay, so that's it. Step two is done. Let's go to step three. If you reach step three, congratulations. Okay. Step three is um, learning the Bisaya sentence structure. So on my last video, I actually discussed to you the basic um, sentence structure. So today we are going to expand that sentence structure. Okay. So the most common sentence structure in Bisaya starts with the action word or action so it's always starts with a not always most of the time okay the bisaya sentence structure starts with a action word or action and then followed by the subject or the doer of the action and then it can be followed by an object the object could mean a thing or a place or a person okay or it could also follow a, an adverb, an adverb of time, an adverb of manner, okay? Or the, um, the Bisaya sentence structure could be expanded like sub uh, action word followed by the subject and then the object and then the adverb. So later on, we are going to um, discuss that one. We're going to put words into every, um, uh, into every part of speech, okay? So again... Um, what's the first one? That's the action followed by the subject and then the object or subject. Oh, no, no, no. Action word, subject or an adverb. Okay. Or action word, subject, object, and then we can add an adverb in the end. Okay. So to further understand what I am talking about, let's go to step Four. Yes, we are now on step four. Are you ready to construct sentences in Bisaya? Yes, we are ready. I'm speaking in behalf of you. Okay, anyway, so let's start. Okay, so anyway, on step three, we have already discussed the sentence structure in Bisaya. So all we have to do now is just to fill in um, words for every part. Okay, so again, we will put here, this is the uh, action word and then we have the subject followed by the object and later on if we are so used to it we can expand okay so anyway let's start first with the verb so um let's try making a sentence in the present tense okay so in the present tense let's pick a verb first so um let's start with the inom that's drink that's our first verb right okay so if we are going to make inom in the present tense, so how are we going to do that? We say naga inom. Okay, so let's try naga inom. Naga inom. And then our subject. So we could say our subject we can have um I. Okay, so first I. Okay. So the I there is ko. So naga inom ko, meaning I am drinking. Okay? Naga inom ko. Okay? And then let's expand. Let's put an object. So what are you drinking? Let's choose from the nouns there. Too big. Okay, because water is life. So let's have too big first. Okay. Nagainom ko too big. Actually, that's already understandable. But it's grammatically incorrect. So we are going to put a word after, in between the subject and the object. And you know what that word is? That word is? Og. Okay, so you will put og if uh, the next word is um is a noun. Okay, is a noun. Like it's a thing. Okay, so naga ino ko og tubig. Now our sentence is complete. Okay, 
Or if you don't want to use the ga because it's too long, you could say ga inom ko og tubig. That's in the present. Okay? How about if you're going to make it in the past? Okay? So we say nag inom ko og tubig. Or ni inom ko og tubig. Okay? How about in the future? Mag inom ko og tubig or mo inom sorry mo inom ko og tubig okay so let's try changing the uh, changing the what do you call this one the object so let's not have tubig let's have uh, gatas instead so in the in the present okay so we could say in the present ga inom ko og gatas ah very good ga inom ko og gatas how about oh, we will make the, the sentence in the past and we will change our object. We could say, let's use um, tambal. So that's medicine example. Okay? So, nag-inom ko o tambal. Or ni-inom ko o tambal. Okay? And then, uh, let's try in the future. Okay? Um, mo inom ko o tambal or mag inom ko o tambal okay so uh, learners let's try to expand the sentence that we have just made this uh, the sentence in the future so we have uh, mag inom ko o tambal that's in the future right let's try to expand it let's use the word <clears throat> unya that's later okay so let's put later Mag inom ko o tambal unya. So meaning I will drink or I will take my medicine later. Okay. Mag inom ko o tambal unya. Mag inom ko o tambal unya. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Let's try um uh the next verb. Okay. The next verb is kaon. Okay. Kaon. What do you want? What tense do you want? I think we could try in the past. Okay? So, how to make kaon in the past? Nagkaon. Nagkaon. Actually, if you will use nag, the, the, the kaon there would be pronounced differently. So, we, we could say nagkaon. Nag, instead of kaon, we say nagkaon. Okay? Nagkaon ko. Nagkaon ko. Ko. I will use ko as a subject, okay? Nagkaon ko. Og. What are we eating? We could say, um, ah, let's use cooked rice. So that's kanon, okay? Nagkaon ko og kanon. Okay, nagkaon ko og kanon. Okay, let's uh, practice and go around with these words. Let's uh, change the subject. Instead of ko, let's use ka. You. Okay, so, um, in the past, still in the same tense, okay, in the past. So, instead of nag, we would use ni, okay? Ni kaon. See the, 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 the change on how you pronounce the word, okay? Ni kaon ka og. Oh, so, me, me, uh, let's just say you don't like cooked rice. You don't like kanon. So, we say bread, okay? You like bread, so we say pan. Pan, okay. Ni kaon ka o pan. Okay. Ni kaon ka o pan. And uh, we're going to expand it. For example, we want to specify when was the action done. Okay. So, let's look from our adverbs of time here. So, uh, what, what are we going to use? We can use um, yesterday. So, what's the, the Bisaya for yesterday? Uh, gahapon. Okay. So let's put gahapon. Ni kaon ka upan gahapon. Ah, you sound like a Bisaya speaker now. Repeat after me. Ni kaon ka upan gahapon. Ah. Let's try um changing another adverb of time. But our sentence would still be in the past, okay? Let's just change our adverb of time. Uh, let's try uh, ganina. 
Pwede na. Okay. Likaon ka ug pan ganina. Ah. Likaon ka ug pan ganina. Ah, okay. Likaon ka ug pan ganina. Okay. Next, uh, let's try another uh, verb. Uh, what verb is the next one? Uh, let's use or gamit. Gamit. Okay. So, let's use gamit and let's construct a sentence in the future. Okay, let's have it in the future. So, how will you translate, uh, how will you transform gamit into future? Mo. So, let's have mo. It's shorter actually. Mo gamit and then ka. So, you will still be the subject. Okay. Mo gamit ka og so, let's have a uh, soap, okay? Mugamit ka og sabon. Mugamit ka og sabon. Okay, mugamit ka og sabon. When are you going to use the soap? Okay, so let's specify, okay? Mugamit ka og sabon. Um, let's use here. Uh, what's the bisaya for tomorrow? That's ugma, okay? Mugamit ka og sabon ugma. Ah, you know already how to construct. How about um, later? What's the adverb? Uh, what's the bisaya for later? Unya. Okay. Mugamit ka og sabon unya. Ah, great. Great job. Okay, so, teacher, we don't want um, ko and ka as a subject. What about we are going to use a name? We are going to talk about another person. So, okay, let, for example, let's pick a name. Uh, maybe Burr. B-E-R, Burr. That's short for subscriber. <laughs> okay, let's have a Burr. Okay, so now our subject is neither I nor you. So, it's another person. Burr. Okay, so um, how are we going to make that one in a sentence? Okay, it's very easy, like one, two, three. So, let's try to construct um, a sentence using uh, gamit, okay? In the future, in the future. Let's uh, still stay in the future, okay? So, mugamit, and then we have the subject, ber. You want ber. Okay, mugamit, ber. So, it's, uh, it's uh, grammatically incorrect. So, in order to make it correct, we will add C. Okay, now you know what C is for, okay? Mugamit C ber. So, C is used before the subject or the doer of the action, okay? Um, and you will just use C when you are talking about another person. Not you or not I, but another person, okay? Nigamit C ber ug sabon. Gahapon. Okay. Nigamit. Am I correct? <laughs> In the future. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's try to reconstruct the sentence. Okay. Mugamit si ber og sabon ugma. Okay, we are still in the future. I'm actually confused. Okay. Mugamit si ber og sabon unya. Okay? Meaning later. Or mugamit Siber ug sabon ugma. Okay? How about we are going to make the sentence of ver in the past and we are going to use um, uh, what? let's go back to inog, let's drink. Okay? Let's just spare that adto. We will use adto later on. Okay? So let's go back to inog first and we'll have ver as the subject. So uh, we'll do it in the past tense. Okay? So, inom in the past, that's nag-inom or ni-inom. Okay, so let's have ni. Ni-inom si ber ug gatas. Okay? Ni-inom si ber ug gatas. Let's expand. In the past, okay? Ni-inom si ber ug gatas ganina. Okay. Or ni-inom si ber ug gatas Gahapon. Okay. How about, um, now we will use the last verb. Okay, that's adto. 
add to meaning go. Okay, so add to. So let's still use ver as the subject, okay? What do you want? Uh, past, present, or future? Let's just have it in the present, okay? First, let's have it in the present. So, naga add to si ver. Okay? And then, let's have a location because add to mean it's a verb asking for uh, an object or uh, asking for a location. Okay, so naga add to si ber simbahan. So simbahan is our only noun there. Uh, means It means church. It's the only noun there which uh, pertains to a location or a place. Okay, so nag, naga add to si ber sa Simbahan. Now, I used sa. I did not use ug. Okay? I used sa. Sa is a, a word that you will put before the place. Okay? So, nagaad to si ber sa simbahan. Okay? Or, nag, or gaad to. Gaad to si ber sa simbahan. Gaad to si ber sa Simbahan. Present. It's it's a fact that she is going to the church. Maybe it's a continuous action every Sunday. She is going to the church. Okay? It's a fact that she is going to the church. So, gaatu siber sa simbahan. Okay? Okay, let's have it in the uh, future. Okay? Muatu siber sa simbahan uguma. Muad to si Ber sa simbahan unya. Okay? How are you doing there? Are you still okay? Yes, I would like to congratulate you in advance because you reached step 5. Okay. So, in step 5, I'm just going to give you two English sentences and you're going to do your best to translate them in Visaya. Okay? So, if you can translate these English sentences in Bisaya, meaning successfully, <laughs> you have successfully um, understood our lesson, okay? So, <clears throat> let's start. I will drink water later. I will drink water later. Translate, please. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you said muinom ko o tubig unya, very good. Or if you say maginom ko o tubig unya, correct. Okay, very good. Congratulations. Okay, let's go to the second and last sentence that you will be translating. Um, I will go to the church tomorrow. I will go to the church tomorrow. Okay, translate. Yes, if you said muadto ko sa simbahan ugma, correct? Or if you say magadto ko sa simbahan ugma, still correct. Okay. Congratulations, my dear um, learners in this Bisaya classroom. Congratulations. Again, if you have reached this part of the video, please comment down below. Tell me what are the things that you have learned and what are the things that you don't understand. And also tell me what are the things that you want to teach, uh, that you want me to explain on my next videos. All right, so more practice and you'll get there. Please practice it to your Bisaya friends, to your Bisaya family. You can, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. Okay, so that would be all. Congratulations, everybody, for finishing this long video. Thank you very much. And I hope that you will subscribe. If you like my lesson, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe so that the next time that I will be releasing a video, you will be notified. Thank you very much. This is Jonah Gonzalez and see you next time in Bisaya Classroom. Bye!